Good morning. Um, I haven't eaten anything today because although I feel like I'm craving food, I'm just like nothing sounds good. Um, all I have are eggs. I do have a steak. I'll probably have the steak uh, for lunch. I'm going to head out right now to get a haircut and uh, I'm going to work on the sides of the hair. I'm probably going to leave it kind of long, longer. I'm going to trim this beard also. So I'm going to head out there here shortly, and um, I don't know if I'll stop anywhere else before I come home, but I'll make that steak for dinner or for lunch. Uh, I don't know what else I'll make. I don't think I have any vegetables. But, yeah, I don't know, like, what this feeling is of... I mean, I feel like I'm hungry, but it's just nothing sounds good. Uh, well, I take that back. What sounds good is I'm craving junk food for some reason. Um, I'm craving McDonald's. Right now I'm craving a McDonald's, uh, McGriddle. <clears throat> I don't know if I'm craving sugar, like if my body wants carbs. Or if it's just a craving for junk food. I don't know. Um... I think probably normally I would allow myself to give in, but considering I'm going on the trip this Wednesday, I feel like I should just wait and be good with the diet because I'll be doing plenty of cheating in Europe. So, uh, yeah, that's my thought. And plus, I don't need McDonald's because that's trash food. It's like literally trash. It's not even human food. It's so ultra processed. But, uh, for some reason, I'm craving it. I don't know if maybe the ice cream I had last night just caused these cravings or what, but I did feel, I think yesterday prior to eating the ice cream and now today, I, well, I don't really feel itchy. I was going to say I feel itchy. Yesterday, I felt kind of itchy for some reason. This morning, I don't really feel itchy, but I feel more achy. Um, it's not extreme, but I'm wondering if, because that ice cream had a, a little bit of stevia in it. And I've, I'm not 100% sure if I do get a reaction from stevia. I think I do. I know that I'm uh, allergic to ragweed and stevia's in the same family. So typically I don't eat stevia, but the ice cream had stevia, I forget what they called it, some form of stevia. So I don't know if that's causing this achiness. Most of the ingredients in the ice cream were pretty clean in the sense that I don't think they were heavily processed. I'm sure Stevie, well, I know Stevie is heavily processed, but it seemed like it was more natural ingredients as opposed to like chemicals you would read on a regular ultra processed food. Um, but anyway, I'm not really too sure what's causing the achiness now, but it's not really that bad. I might just be tired also. I went to bed pretty late. Went to bed like around 1 a.m. I was working on a, working on framework for a few videos ago. I told you that I'm in a video group. So it's just like a short film group. Um, it's it's so everyone can get practice on like all different aspects of filmmaking operating the camera lighting audio acting script writing directing all that good stuff um so anyway we're just a friend and I, a friend and i a friend from improv we're just trying to create more framework for the script writing portion because now there's really nothing and uh I just feel like we spin our wheels a lot and trying to figure out a script. So uh, that's what we were working on last night is a framework for script writing. Um, I think we got a pretty good framework now. So um, anyways, probably going to get going soon to get the haircut. Hopefully it turns out decent. I know, like, I've seen some photos. Yeah, I think it was a photo, but video two. I was cutting my hair pretty short, but 
I just don't like that look, especially on the side. Well, I don't know. It's not that I don't like it. I like it on the side because I don't like this hair sticking out. But right now it's not that bad, I guess. I think I just have to comb it down and like maybe put some product in it, some paste or whatever. Uh, but I really didn't like how the back of my head looked. Like it just looked way too round. So my idea is to leave it longer. Right now I blue dry it. So this is like combed back a lot, but I think typically I'll maybe style my hair like over my forehead more, maybe. I don't know. I like how it looks sometimes. Right now it's like real stiff and on top of my head. I'm not crazy about that. I need to cover up some of this forehead. I don't know. I want to look good for the photos in Europe. I don't want to look like some skinhead. <clears throat> the beard, I don't know, I kind of like it long, but I also don't want this to stick out to make my face look longer or more round. Uh, so I'm going to see what the barber recommends. I was watching a video, they say to like shave this down so it's like straight with your face and then let this grow out. I don't know if I really want a long beard, but... I'm not sure how it would look, actually. So, anyways. Alrighty, I'm going to head out, so I'll talk to you all later. So I just got my hair cut, and I like it a lot. She, uh, well, she mostly um, just cleaned up the edges here. So, like, around my ear, it looks pretty good. It looks really good. I like it a lot. It's, it's exactly what I wanted, so... And uh, I've never trimmed my beard this way, but I like how she uh, made this like kind of shorter and then it gets thicker and longer in front. I like it. I might uh, try to keep up with this line. I like that line she made. So it looks good. My hair right now, I don't know, maybe it's kind of oily, but I think once I wash my hair and blow dry it, blow dry it I think... Uh, I don't know, it's just like, I feel like sometimes it looks differently than it does now. Right now, it seems like it's maybe oily. But, um, once it's, like, dry, not oily and dry, I'm gonna, like, style it kind of down more. So, but yeah, it turned out pretty good. I'm happy with it. So, I just made a trip to Publix. I got some sausage. I told you that I was craving the McDonald's McGriddle, so I figured do a little cooking how to and how to make that. This is one ingredient that's not required for the sandwich, but I was just walking by the cooler and this looked really good. So, I got it. It was five bucks for the shrimp. The shrimp looked huge, too. And I got a heavily processed sausage, but um, I don't know. I like Jimmy Dean. I know it's probably not as good for you, but that's what I got. Got some gum, too, for the flight to Europe. They say to chew gum to pop your ears and also to wake you up near the end of the flight. So, uh, yeah, that's all I got. So I'm going to snack on the shrimp, and then I will make the keto version of... McDonald's McGriddle sandwich and I'll show you guys how I do that Alrighty, so I'm going to show you guys how I make my keto uh, McGriddle sandwich It's going to have a sausage patty and uh, an egg cheese with keto 92nd bread um, but I'm going to modify the bread to taste more like the McGriddle going to start with this Jimmy Dean sausage, maple sausage. <coughs> this is one pound of sausage. Um, I'll probably split it into three patties, a few one-third pound patties.
I don't know if I've ever had the maple flavor. In one serving, I can smell the maple. In one serving, there's two grams of carbs. Um, so it's not bad. Um, I don't know. I was thinking about putting butter in my pan, but this is so fatty. I think it should be fine. It's not going to stick, at least. After it cooks a little bit, it won't stick, I think. So I'm just going to form patties as well as I can. Um, for my sausage patties, I don't like it too thin, but I also don't like it too thick. When you cook them, they shrink and they tend to get thicker. So, uh, uh I think that's a pretty good size there. Just make sure this thing's recording. Yeah, it's recording. <clears throat> I'm not sure if I'm completely in frame, but it doesn't matter. I know the pan's in frame. Depending on what you're going to use for the bread, you could shape your patties to be the size of your bread, of your bun, or whatever you're using. I'm going to use a cereal bowl to make the 90 second bread. So I'll try to shape these a little bit larger. Like I said, they of course they shrink down when they cook also, so. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm going to wash my hands. I, uh, I'll make the bread. So I'll, I'll change the camera position around to get a better view of when I make the bread. Basically, the bread's going to be the standard 90 second mug bread recipe, which is on the community tab if you want that recipe. Usually, it's uh, four simple ingredients, stuff you probably have at home already, if you're doing keto. Uh, the only odd thing might be the almond flour if you're not doing keto. Um, but I'll add syrup to it. <clears throat> of course, it's keto-friendly syrup by Chalk Zero. This is really good syrup. It's not too expensive either. It's like $5 a bottle. So I'll do syrup. Um, uh, okay. Sometimes I do Lacanto monk fruit sweetener as well, but I, I really like the brown sweetener as opposed to this. I mean, this is still fine if you wanted to sweeten it, but uh, I'm not going to do this this time. Uh, what I will do is, of course, I mean, this is sweet also. This is sweetened with monk fruit, um, so just using this will make it a little sweet. But I'm also going to add a few drops of monk fruit extract. I'm not going to use that bottle because I have that bottle for my trip that I'm going to take. When I have tea, I'm going to sweeten the tea with monk fruit instead of sugar. Um, so I'll add to the bread syrup and also some cinnamon. Uh, I don't know where my cinnamon is. If you wanted to, you could also do vanilla extract. Well, actually, if you're doing a um, McDonald's McGrill clone, I don't think I would do vanilla, because I don't think there's a vanilla taste to it. If you've never had a McGriddle, it's basically a pancake. 
flavor with maple syrup. Um, so it's actually not a cinnamon flavor, but I like cinnamon just to give it that extra, I don't know, pancake flavor. Um, anyway, I think I have an open cinnamon. I'm going to pause the video and then I'll be right back. Alrighty, so I repositioned the camera um, and I found the cinnamon. This is actually, I forgot I had this. I've got like two bags of it. I don't know why I always forget it, but this is actually that brown monk fruit sweetener mixed with cinnamon. Sometimes I'll use this for a keto version of cinnamon toast. But anyway, I'll put some of this in it. Um, I, I actually don't think I'll put monk fruit extract in it just because we're, we'll have two different sweeteners as it is. So I think that'd be fun. I flipped the patties. Um, I've been leaving my butter in the fridge just because I haven't been using butter as often as I normally do. So I find like if I use it in a pan, I'll just throw it in the pan and let it melt in the pan. <clears throat> but because we're making 90 second bread, um, I found recently that if you melt the butter first, the bread just comes out better. The bread will come out, uh, the batter will be more wet and the actual bread is just more spongy, <clears throat> which if you don't, I found if you don't have the batter wet, it's way too dry. And then once you cook it, it's like it's kind of crumbly also. So uh, making sure the batter is a wet consistency definitely makes a better bread. And it's easier to mix also when the butter is melted. So, uh, I mean, I've made this recipe so many times, I just eyeball it all now. But I think the official recipe is a tablespoon of butter, 30 grams of almond flour, um, a teaspoon of baking powder, and one egg. If you want to verify those measurements, like I said, the recipe is on the community tab. So the butter is melted. I'm trying to make sure this stuff is in frame. If I had a proper kitchen video camera, I would put it overhead, but ain't nobody got time for that. Uh, so like I said, 30, 30 grams of almond flour, uh, which is about that much. I think if you wanted to measure it with a cup, I would probably say one third cup. Uh, teaspoon of baking powder. <laughs> and uh, I'll add the sweetener, the cinnamon sugar sweetener. Well, it's not sugar, it's erythritol and monk fruit by Lacanto. I'll add the maple syrup. This obviously will make it even a little more wet, which is a good thing, I think. Mix it all up. <clears throat> Actually, it seems like it's kind of dry. Actually, it seems like it's very dry. Oh, you know what? I forgot the egg. That's why. <laughs> Definitely need the egg. these again. Mm. 
Turn that down a little bit. All right, this batter's looking a lot better now. I think I really like the consistency also. So yeah, I think it'll make the perfect spongy bread. I think for this sandwich, usually I'll toast the bread also to make it crispy, but for a McGriddle, it's supposed to be more like a pancake. So I'm not going to toast it. <laughs> they pop this in the microwave for 90 seconds. And we'll be right back. Alright, so the bread has microwave for 90 seconds. You see, that's how it looks. Um, I'll let this cool down a little bit before I take it out of the bowl. But I think it turned out pretty good. It looks like it did. Um, so I'll finish cooking this sausage. Sausage, I like to use this meat thermometer just to make sure that uh, it reaches the correct temperature. I don't like eating raw meat. Um, forecast to reach 100, 145 degrees. <clears throat> okay, that's over 200, so that looks like it's done. And when you're cooking sauces like this, it uh, doesn't make a huge difference if it's overcooked. This stuff, the Jimmy Dean stuff especially, stays moist. Because there's a lot of fat in it. <laughs> I'm going to turn down the heat to like medium, I don't know, medium low. Uh, it's on number three out of nine. Okay, and then I'm going to cook my egg. Now, um... If you want to make sure that your egg gets all the way cooked, like uh, no runny yolk, which I think for this sandwich, especially, I mean, if you've ever eaten a McDonald's McGriddle or uh, an egg, any sandwich with, uh, with an egg on it, you know that they get their eggs all the way cooked. There's never any runny yolk. Which, I don't mind. I like runny yolks. Runny yolks, honestly. But, uh... For the sandwich to make it authentic, I'll, uh, cook the egg all the way. Uh, yeah. My heat's on a three. But, to uh, cook the egg completely, you just want to cook it on a lowish heat. Because if your heat's higher... It's going to cook the outside of the egg too quickly, and then the yolk doesn't cook. So you want it on a lower heat. I think any type of egg I cook is usually on a lower heat. Uh, when I make scrambled eggs, you can probably watch a video of that. The heat's low, and uh, Gordon Ramsay actually suggests that you take the pan off the burner intermittently to uh, so it doesn't get too warm but if I scramble eggs um, of course I'm always mixing the eggs and uh, it's like you don't want to cook them you don't want overcooked scrambled eggs I hate dry scrambled eggs so I'll leave my scrambled eggs like with some runny yolks and then sometimes also I'll mix in some avocado 
mayo just to make it extra creamy. But lately I've just been making sure I don't overcook scrambled eggs. I make sure I leave it pretty runny. But like I said, today I just, I wasn't hungry for anything. I mean, I take that back. I was hungry. I felt hungry. I don't know if it was just a craving, but um, I wanted the McDonald's McGriddle. That's what I was only craving. So in my opinion, that's not true hunger. I think that's just uh, a craving or trying to eat out of, not out of boredom, but I think it's more of a craving. Um, so I think it's good to be cognizant of those feelings and know when you're actually hungry and not hungry. Now, now I'm to the point where I'm hungry. Um, yeah, I'm hungry and I realize that I'm going to make my own food to eat a better quality of food. A low carb version of food also. Um, so I think that kind of confirms that, you know, when you go out of your way to prepare your own meal, you're doing it because you're actually hungry and you're just not giving in to some type of craving, in my opinion. <clears throat> so anyway, um, I'll come back once the egg's more cooked. All right, it hasn't been that long, but <clears throat> excuse me, I just flipped the egg and I'm going to put a slice of cheese on top so it can melt. Um, I will be honest, the craft processed cheese is probably the best for this sandwich, but it's processed, so it's not good for you. This Cracker Barrel cheese, I like it because it's not heavily processed. Like, you see the ingredients is pasteurized milk, cheese culture, salt, enzymes, aneto color. If you, if you don't want the uh, aneto color, get the white cheese. But uh, the flavor of this is really good, too. It doesn't have the processed cheese flavor, but it's a natural cheese flavor. So I'm going to put that on top and uh, let that melt down a little bit. If you have a lid, a lid would work out good also. Um, I'm lazy and don't like to clean dishes, so I'm going to use this already dirty cutting board. Um, it'll also help the yolk cook in the egg faster. I guess so I'll put some of the sausage in a baggie. I'm gonna use this big one here from a sandwich. Can't see the sausage. Oh, wait, kinda can. <coughs> I just put it on a napkin to catch all that grease and stuff. Now, typically I do have the habit of adding mayonnaise to like any of my sandwiches, but this one does not get mayonnaise. And using a plastic cutting board on top of a hot pan might be a bad idea. Uh, I just lifted it and felt like it stuck a little bit. So uh, don't do that. Uh, use a proper lid. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna shut the burner off. <clears throat> Honestly, I might have put the cheese on a little too soon. I probably should have let the egg cook more. So I have a feeling the yolk might still be a little bit runny, but I don't really care. tends to want to come out of the bowl less when it's more wet, I think, when I added those extra ingredients like the syrup. It's definitely a little softer than usual. 
but I think it'll be fine. This bread is usually a little crumbly. Yeah, might be a lot of crumbly this time. We'll make it work. Definitely sticky. I can feel the stickiness of the syrup. I don't really know what the stickiness is because there's no sugar in the syrup. So there's the base of our keto McGriddle. Um, one thing I should have done is put some syrup on the bread. I'm going to put it on the top part. Uh, put a little bit on this too. Top it with the egg. And I'm pretty sure that's uh, all of the components of a McDonald's McGriddle. The pancake bread, sausage, egg, cheese, and uh, yeah, that's it. I don't think I'm forgetting anything. I'm going to actually let this cool a little bit because if you try to eat it right away, it's too hot for one, but the other reason is uh, it'll all fall apart a lot more and also I think it's good to let the flavors kind of marinate a little bit let it like cool down a little so I might let this cool down for a couple minutes but yeah there you have it a keto version McGriddle sandwich obviously it doesn't <laughs> look like McDonald's but it'll taste good and it'll be low carb all right, so I figured I would do something a little different in this video, and uh, I'm not going to call this a mukbang, but I'll leave it on the video. <laughs> I'll let you know how it tastes. I had a little bit of milk left also, so I'm going to finish that up. It's not keto-friendly. There's a lactose in it, but it's like probably three ounces of milk, so it's not super high carb. <clears throat> Let's see how this puppy tastes. Mm -hmm. mm. The bread has an awesome flavor. Like, you would never tell that this was keto or no sugar. <clears throat> I taste the syrup a lot. That's a strong flavor. And um, I guess the cinnamon, the ci yeah, I taste the cinnamon. It kind of like blends into the syrup taste. It's good though. Um, and the bread is crumbly. <clears throat> the sausage is good. The sausage doesn't have a strong maple flavor. I mean, with the whole sandwich, there's plenty of maple flavor as it is. But uh, I don't think I'm getting a lot of maple flavor from the sausage. The egg mm, is kind of crispy around the edge, which I'm not crazy about. Um, I don't know. Maybe I should have cleaned the pan before I cooked the egg. I mean, if I was doing this professionally. Not professionally, but... I don't know. If I was making this for for someone else. <clears throat> See the yolk is still a little runny also. Which like I said, I'm fine with that. But a proper McDonald's McGriddle or any egg sandwich has a cooked yolk. Something's chewy. I think the egg feels chewy. Not too sure what would make the egg chewy. <clears throat> it's 
probably just the stuff that was left in the pan from the sausage. Like I said, you kind of have to like put your hand underneath and make this bread. It is crumbly. You have to support the bread as you eat it. But I like if you're craving a McGriddle or craving pancakes or craving French toast, this is the bread to make. It's really good. It's moist. Sweet. <clears throat> I find lately too, <clears throat> it's like after I eat something, like I'll make myself, for example, this sandwich. And I think typically my portions are always larger than what they should be. Like I'll, I'll eat a little bit and then I just don't feel hungry or like I almost feel like nauseous. And I don't know what's causing that. I'm not getting that right now. I, I was pretty hungry, so I'm not getting that right now. But in the past couple of days, I've done that in the morning. Like I'll eat something, especially with eggs. Like that happens a lot with eggs. Uh, I don't drink milk too often lately within within the past year. But when I was younger, like I would have milk every single morning. So I love milk. <clears throat> this is actually uh, organic, organic, uh, full vitamin D milk. Um, yeah, I miss milk. You can kind of see the yolk. It's wet. It's not runny. It's not super runny. There's a little bit that was runny, but it's mostly cooked. <clears throat> Yeah, I think the chewiness is left over from the meat. <clears throat> so this recipe that I made for the bread, if you wanted to, you can also do this for a different type of sandwich. Um, maybe put less wet ingredients in it, like less syrup. I, I think if you do less syrup, it may not be as crumbly. Um, yeah, with this bread, you have to like have the right consistency. Like it can't be too dry and it can't be too wet. But once you make the bread, you could also cut it in half, make two slices, and then in the bowl, mix up, scramble an egg. Um, and then typically I do coconut milk, but you could do regular milk if you wanted to, or cream if you're doing keto. And then dip the bread in that mixture and then pan fry it. You could eat that as French toast, which I've done that before on this channel. There's videos of it. Or uh, if you wanted to make that, if you wanted to use that bread as the bread for a sandwich like this, you could do that also. <clears throat> I think pan frying it might make it stick together better. When you dip it in that egg, that egg will probably bind it together better. But for myself, it's not a big deal. I don't really mind supporting the sandwiches I eat. <clears throat> and you know, I mean, this bread is not only just good for keto. It's good also if you uh, have a gluten intolerance. Because lately, as I've been talking, about the past few videos, I think I do have some sort of gluten intolerance. I know when I eat it, I definitely, mentally, I feel it, and physically. <clears throat> so it's like there's got to be some sort of intolerance there. I like how my haircut came out.
What do you want, Donnie? Do you want an egg, Donnie? You're a good boy. If you're doing keto and want a pancake or a French toast, you have to try this bread. It's really good. <clears throat> you could probably also do like a cinnamon roll version of it. You can add as much cinnamon as you wanted to to the batter and then sprinkle it with cinnamon. And then you could make some sort of cream cheese keto frosting. Like sometimes you'll get a cinnamon roll French toast. <clears throat> you can make that bread into a French toast and then drizzle some cream cheese frosting over it. Cream cheese frosting is really just the cream cheese, a sweetener, and a little bit of milk or cream. I'd probably do cream and it makes a, makes a good frosting. So yeah, like if you're wanting to eat something indulgent or sweet, for breakfast especially that would yeah that's a good idea anyways i'm gonna go clean up um thank you guys for joining me and i'll probably create another video later on but hope you're having a good saturday so i decided to go out for dinner tonight i was craving some asian food i went to this place called hibachi express it's like a self-serve hibachi place Got a side of egg rolls or spring rolls too. So it smells pretty good. I'm gonna eat it up.